good evening folks this is dr paul thank you very much for tuning to my channel today today i want to talk a few minutes about paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria its diagnosis and treatment as i told you in the pathophysiology there are three things to remember and remember these three things and it's very easy to predict how you diagnose it and how you treat it so the three things are the bone marrow and complement on red blood cells and the red blood cells start with that there is intravascular hemolysis and what can you expect there is anemia which could be normal macrocytic and the mcv could go high and then as you can expect the reticulocytosis can happen because of the hemolysis the bone marrow starts to produce more and more red blood cells and the reticulocytes will increase because there is not a, not enough uh, iron you can expect iron deficiency right and you can expect uh, unconjugated bilirubinuria the ldh will also go up so all these things will happen when red blood cell hemolysis happen and the haptoglobin can fall and remember in the clinical history patients is i'm peeing blood instead of urine so that would be a very high clinical hallmark to diagnose this disease and you take urine sample sometimes you see that color variation the hemoglobinuria right in that urine sample but you say sometimes you may miss it that's why it's important to take urine samples different time of the day and to compare those things and then it helps you to diagnose it well so the next thing is bone marrow the bone marrow will be erythroid hyperplasia because it is trying to produce more and more red blood cells as red blood cells are destroyed so the bone marrow is working hard so that there is ultimately it may exhaust itself and finally it may result in aplastic anemia so that's a very important point aplastic anemia can happen in patients with paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria so very important point folks so remember that then the complement you see the complement is trying to destroy these red blood cells which are deficient in the proteins C55 and C59. So that is, you, you are going to demonstrate that a substantial proportion of patients' red blood cell cell increases susceptibility to complement C due to the deficiency on the surface proteins, particularly CD55 and CD59. Because these proteins, they protect these red blood cells. So that's a very, very important point. So, so the gold standard test is flow cytometry. And the bimodal distribution of discrete population, that is some red blood cells deficient in CD55 and CD59, they go to one side. And some blood cells that have CD55 and CD59 go to the other side. So there is the bimodal distribution, and that is the best screening test. So remember that the flow cytometry to show the granulocyte that are deficient in CD55 and CD59 is the diagnostic test here. Now let's go to the treatment section a little bit. As I said, even think about treatment in these three areas, bone marrow, red blood cells, complements. Let's start with uh, red blood cells. These patients are deficient in normal red blood cells. So give them normal red blood cells isn't it simple give them transfusions and give them some folic acid because their bone marrow is trying hard they are iron deficient give them a little bit of uh, iron like ferrosulfate like three tablets a day and what about corticosteroids we throw corticosteroids on almost everything in in medicine but in this case they are contraindicated because they have dangerous side effects. They don't help. So corticosteroids are contraindicated here. And then think about complement. The complement is attacking these red blood cells. So find a humanized monoclonal antibody to attack this complement. We got ecolizumab right there. So what is the medication we use in these patients? Ecolizumab. What is ecolizumab? 
It is a humanized monoclonal antibody. So acolizumab proved to be efficient. It is introduced in 2007. Basically, it is blocking the complement. So you, I, I told you the complement is attacking the red blood cells and causing intravascular hemolysis. So using this humanized monoclonal antibody, you are basically inhibiting this complement. Isn't it interesting? Now let's go to the third thing. The third thing is like bone marrow. Simple, the bone marrow is the factory which is producing these deficient red blood cells. So do bone marrow transplantation or do like stem cell transfer into these patients. So easy folks. Complement ecolizumab, give every 14 days. That's the only form currently available as a definitive cure. Then allogenic bone marrow transplant. That's the definitive cure for these patients. Find a HLA identical sibling and uh, then take this uh, medication and give them. And then ecolizumab, I said that a lot of patients are getting benefited because of this. And most patients with PNH have mild problems. So th they don't even need all these things. But when the aplastic anemia is setting, then these patients definitely need bone marrow transplantation. All right, folks, if you like uh, have questions, please post me. Like I, I want to make it as simply as possible. Remember acolizumab, it, there are many questions on this. It's basically a monoclonal antibody acting upon complement so that the membrane attack complex cannot assemble. Acolizumab improves quality of life and it reduces hemolysis. The transfusion requirements and thrombosis risk are reduced, but the problem is acolizumab is expensive. And the other thing is, uh, is it is attacking the complement and complement is not a villain, folks. When in, in what happens, you know that complement deficient patients can get Neisseria meningitis, right? So people who are receiving acolizumab, what is the risk in them? Because the acolizumab inhibits complement, it can make these patients to uh, as prone for meningitis. So I have given you three things today. Bone marrow, red blood cells, complement. I said the problem is complement, C5 downstream, the membrane attack complex, make it like MAC. It is attacking these red blood cells deficient in CD55 and CD59. So, uh, treat those three things. Bone marrow is the problem. Do bone marrow transplantation. It's gone. It's the cure. But the problem is bone marrow transplant is not easy to do. You need to find a HLA identical sibling. Then complement. Use your monoclonal um, antibody like acolizumab and inhibit the complement. And as you are inhibiting the complement, you are making these patients at risk for meningococcal infection. So give them meningococcal vaccine, Manactra. Then third thing is red blood cells. And these patients are deficient in CD55 and CD59. So give them normal red blood cells. So easy, right? So uh, if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel and uh, Post your questions and send me your comments. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.